Hey everyone, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we're going to look at one more application of these MOSFETs that we've been spending so much time on. So if you have some electronics experience, you might know that there are quite a few cases where it would be very beneficial if you have a constant current source. Now implementing a constant current source is not exactly trivial because we have things like batteries and power supplies that can output a constant voltage, but making something output a constant current is not always as easy. But we can actually implement a constant current source, or at least a pretty good constant current source, using just a MOSFET and a resistor. So we're going to jump right into that. Let me get out of your way, and we're going to start talking about current mirrors. So a current mirror is a circuit that's designed to copy and mirror a current. So we can set a reference current using one MOSFET, and we can actually mirror that current out to however many different loads that we need. So now we have a good reference current that we can create a constant current source out of. So we can use MOSFETs. This is a, just an NMOS here. So we can use something like this NMOS to create a pretty good constant current source, which is super useful if you have something like an amplifier that might have a changing load depending on the current draw. So just a little hint, if you want, you can try and take what you learn here, implement a current mirror into that common source amplifier that we took a look at yesterday. Okay, So maybe you can use this instead of using resistors and stuff like that to actually set uh, your uh, operation point. Instead of having to use those resistors, take a whole lot of precautions. You can use these current mirrors to set things like an amplifier operation point. So let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at a circuit. So if we assume that we initially start off where everything is at zero volts, okay, everything is zero volts, there's no current flowing at all. What's going to happen is that whenever we connect this supply, some current is going to start flowing through this resistor and it's going to charge up our gate. So we're going to get maybe 10 volts on this gate. And whenever we get 10 volts on our gate, that's going to cause current to start flowing through this MOSFET, okay? So 10 volts for VGS is really, really high. So it's gonna try and push as much current as possible and it's probably gonna start acting like a switch. So if it starts acting like a switch, we're gonna have a very low voltage here. And notice our drain is tied directly to our gate. So if we get a very low voltage on our drain, that means we have a very low voltage on our gate, which means now no current can flow. So what ends up happening is that this MOSFET finds a stable solution where VG here is just going to be some value, probably near the threshold, like 3 volts, that allows a constant current to flow. Now, because excuse me, this VG is tied directly to this resistor, we can actually set the value of this current, which I'll call I0, and it's going to be proportional to this resistor. Okay, So if we increase this resistance, that's going to decrease the current. And if we decrease the resistance, we're going to increase our current. Okay. So would you, using just, just this one resistor and a MOSFET, we can actually get this good I0, okay? And it's pretty stable. Now, the only issue is that we have this connected to VDD, okay? And if we want to get this current out, we need to have our load connected somewhere in here. But then we don't have our VDD connected to the top anymore. So we need to have a way of mirroring this reference current out. And the way that we can do that is using this circuit. So remember, there is no current into these gates, right? No current into these gates. So that means that there is still this same reference current flowing through here, I0. And this I0, again, is proportional to this resistor. Now this I0 is going to give us a gate voltage here. So it's going to give us a gate voltage, and I'll just call it VGS. Now remember, the output of a MOSFET is related to VDS and VGS. But for this first application, we're going to assume that VDS is not going to impact our circuits at all. So we're going to assume that VGS is the only thing that's going to impact our drain current and that VDS is meeting the criteria. Okay, so the, the VDS is meeting all the criteria we need to get current through this MOSFET. Well, what we'll see is that this MOSFET here has a VGS and this MOSFET here has this exact same VGS. So if I call this VGS one and two, those two are equal. And what that means is that this reference current here on the output, so if we have something like a load here connected to VDD, this MOSFET is going to try and pull that exact same amount of reference current through this load. Okay, So as long as all of the conditions are satisfied and we're not breaking the laws of physics, things like that, then we are going to get a nice reference current. So if we maybe need something like 10 milliamps always, we can design for that very, very easily, okay? Now, the only uh, predicament here is that figuring out ID or I0 and IREF is 
difficult. It is very hard, okay? Because these MOSFETs don't have a critical condition that something like a BJT does in order to make this analysis very simple. So what we can use is that we can use something like LT SPICE to design this circuit with a specific MOSFET and then tune that resistor to get the specific current that we want, okay? So that's actually what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna switch gears and we're gonna move into an LT SPICE simulation. So I have this first circuit implemented in LT SPICE and if I click run, oops, don't want you to see that I do have something else hidden there, okay? So if I hit run and I probe the current through this resistor, we're getting about 9.2 milliamps. So if I wanna change this current, maybe if I want it to be a little bit lower, I can change this to be 1K. So instead of 9.2, now we have about 8.3. So changing this, just this resistor, we can change the current flowing through this MOSFET. And you can see that it's going to make that gate voltage exactly what we need. So if we wanna push a little bit higher current, like if we wanna to go to 100 ohms, then we're gonna expect this gate voltage to be a little bit higher. And we can see that it definitely is. And now we are pushing about 79 milliamps, okay? So now, if we look back here, all we have to do is connect that gate to the gate of another MOSFET. So that's what we're gonna do here. So let me scoot over. You can see I actually have two more MOSFETs wired up here, but their gates aren't wired at all. So if I just connect the gates together and click run once more, we're still getting that same 79 milliamps here. And now with no resistor, nothing like that, only connected directly to a supply, this MOSFET is pulling, oops, it looks like we're doing a DC sweep, okay. So I forgot we're doing a DC sweep. So this MOSFET is pulling a pretty constant uh, current, okay. So we here we're pulling 79 milliamps. And how, going from one to 20 volts, we're pulling 78.4 to 87.2. So this is a pretty constant current, especially whenever you have this large change in your drain to source voltage. If you have a load in between here somewhere, then you're going to have even better performance, okay? So this was just kind of to show you that it does still matter what your drain source voltage is. So if you wanna be very precise, you have to be very precise in your designs, okay? So you would want to do something like simulation or testing. And the cool thing about this is that we can actually extend this to any number of MOSFETs. So if I extend this out to a third MOSFET here, we run it once more, we can see that for our first MOSFET, we have our 79 milliamps because it's a fixed drain source voltage. For this second MOSFET, we have that performance. And then for our third MOSFET, we have the exact same performance, okay? So we can mirror this current out to any number of MOSFETs and get a good constant reference, okay? So this is a brief introduction to MOSFETs as current mirrors. Like I said, the analysis of these can be a lot more difficult because you have to use these semiconductor physics equations and things like that, and it gets very, very complicated. So to simplify it, I decided to just show you the circuits and show you how to simulate them in LT SPICE. So if you do need to use them as current mirrors, you know where you can get started without having to delve deep into the math that's involved. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. It keeps me extremely motivated and makes me really want to make more videos about some other cool topics. Okay. So other than that, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.